Good morning, this is Kathy from Crowder's Mountain. Welcome back to part two of the Circle of Fish. I hope you're ready to finish it up. Now in this video, like I said, this is part two. Uh, go back and watch part one if you didn't see how I made the pattern. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show the pattern one more time so that you can take a, a screenshot of it. But in this video, I leave tips and tricks and different kind of techniques on how to paint, how to peel the tape, what kind of paint. But I did want to tell you, um, as I'm painting, I'm showing you my different kind of bottles that I use. I tell you a little bit about the paint that I use, but I am not sponsored by anyone anywhere. So I don't want you to think that I'm just telling you that because I'm sponsored and I'm because I'm not. This is just things that I like to use. It's what I have found works better for me. And this this particular barn quilt is number 201, I think. I think I... No, no, it's 203. I've already put my name and uh, the number on the back of it, so it's 203. So I'm just telling you what I've learned throughout my journey of painting barn quilts. So let's just get started and finish this up. Good morning. What y'all doing? Y'all ready to finish up our uh, circle of fish? I've got the pattern drawn on my board. And I, to keep myself straight, I have just used my paint pens, my uh, heat erasable pens, I mean, to just mark the colors that I'm going to be using where I'm going to be using it. So let me show you those right quick. I'm going to use toasted cranberry and caramel cream because each fish will be two different colors. So I thought those paired up well. Then I'm going to use Rockwall Vine and Jonte, Jonte, Jonte <laughs> Green. And I'm going to use Magenta and California wine. Ooh, I'm about to sneeze. And I'm still debating on this one, but honey glaze and chickadee. So you want a dark light, dark light, dark light. I'm trying to decide about that yellow. I'm just not sure. Because if, you know, we're kind of moving into fall and I was thinking about purple more than yellow. But we can decide that. We'll do that color last. <laughs> okay. Let's move these over and get the paint. Okay. I taped up one side of one fish. And the reason I didn't tape up that in all four spots, spaces, I'm using the toasted cranberry first. Is because of, I'm leading right into the middle and I want those points to be as crisp and pretty as I can make them. 
So I'm only going to do one side at a time. That's going to take a lot longer. If, if it wasn't leading into the next section like that, I would just tape up all one color at one time and paint it and be done with that color. But this is going to take a little bit longer that way. But that's okay. Now I use the heat erasable pens. that I get on Amazon. Remember, that's not going to come back because we're painting over it. And I'm using my little cheap paint brushes that I got at Michael's. I've used them for three years. I think I could probably do for some more, but <laughs> I'll go back over there when I, next time I'm in there, see them. You see, I might got too far over, maybe not. But I'm just putting a very, very thin coat If I can't see that wood underneath there, then I may have gotten it too thick. See, I can still see my wood. So we're good. And a lot of folks, so you have to decide what you want to do. A lot of times people just go off and do something else and come back and I've even heard people say they wait to the next day before they put another coat of paint. Well, I never get this video done that way. And I have painted, you know, you saw the last video, over 200, and this has never been a problem. So I take my little heat tool that only gets 300 watts, and I dry my paint. Now, if you get too close, you're going to blister your paint so you don't want to do that and then I'll just put my second coat on real thin probably could have done with a little, little bit thinner brush this is sort of a medium size sure you get down into that wood and this is MDO in case I haven't uh, medium density overlay is the name of it it's made out of resin so if you're allergic to resin like I am you just be real careful I can't I can't work with it for a long period of time. I, I have to open the doors and the windows and that kind of thing. But I, just, I really, really like this wood. Okay, let's dry that one. do kind of want to let it cool down you know uh, um, don't put the paint on there while the wood's hot and while this paint's hot just kind of let it cool down when it's cool to the touch you know the heat's gone out of it then you can put your next coat on but see it's dry let that cool down just a minute and I want to tell you something um, 
I showed y'all in my last video how I cut this tape. You know, I pull it out and cut it. But I read something this morning. Someone posted on one of the barn quilt Facebook groups that they cut their whole roll in half. I'm not sure how. Maybe with a box cutter or something. And I think I'm going to try that. I'm going to wait till that tape gets just a little bit lower. I don't, I'm not going to try to do a whole roll at a time. But I'm going to experiment. <laughs> and I'll let you know what I find out. Because I would just really love to have that tape roll in my hand while I'm rolling that tape out and, and taping down my sections. This is fine. I'm, you know, I, it's no problem to put my, you know, I'll cut it and I'll, I'll lay it down here and then I'll pick it up. But if I had it in my hand the whole entire time, it sure would work faster. I'm going to try it and I'll let you know. I'm just, uh, I'm scared of really sharp butcher knives and box cutters. <laughs> I use them if I have to, though. Okay, here you go. Hey y'all, nothing. I mentioned one time before when I got to a thousand subscribers, I was going to buy uh, Adobe Pro to edit my videos with. And I'm getting there y'all. I don't know why I, I, I could do it anyway, but I just thought I don't want to spend that money I don't need to. But I feel like if I've got over a thousand subscribers, then somebody's paying attention to what I'm doing. And I want it to be good. And the software that I'm using now is just free stuff. And you get what you pay for. So I want it to be good. Okay, here's our last coat, and we have to wa wait and see. We'll, we'll get this dry and let it cool, and then we'll decide if we needed four coats or not. But some of the dark, darker paints, you probably need to put four coats on, or a gray underneath it. Which is still four coats. But it might keep you from putting five. <laughs> okay. We're going to let that cool down. Completely cool. And then we'll pull the tape off. If we don't need another coat. Okay. It's good and cool and dry, and I just don't think we need but three coats. I think it worked out really well. So now I'm going to pull my tape, and I'm pulling away from the... It's dry, very, very dry and cool down. And then I'm pulling my tape away. And I put really thin layers, and that helps your paint not to peel up. If you're having problems with your paint peeling, then just slow down, put really thin coats on. And if you see it start to peel, just stick your razor right there at it and it'll stop it. And then you can just peel it on down. But if it's real thick, you may have to put that razor all the way down, all the way down the side. Ta-da! Got one! All we need is like a uh, 15 more. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to do this color all the way around. 
and then I'll come back and we'll do the caramel cream. Oh, okay. I'm going to paint the rest of those. I need, I think there'll be three more of these and I'm just gonna get those painted and then we'll come back and we'll put our caramel cream. And before I leave, let me tell you about these bottles just in case I forget. Um, they come from Lole Vefe. And I know it looks like it says Love Life. And I like that, but it's Lole Vefe. And I'll put a link underneath the video if you want some. Today, as I'm taping this video, they were on sale five for ten dollars. Usually they're like five for fifteen, so that's a pretty good deal. I'm not sure you'll get the discount on the sale or not, but you can try it. Um, it's I'll put the link down. It's it's my name, and then it says ten, so um, you'll get the discount code. All right, let, let, let me show you this. You know, I, I love these. I love them. I don't have to paint out of my can. I can just pour just a little bit into this bowl. Just, I mean, a little old tray. You just squirt just a little bit, whatever you think you're going to need. And I don't have to, the air is not getting in and out of there. The paint's not drying inside like it's easy for me to see what colors match up too. You see what I was doing a while ago. I, I wanted to match them up so I can see very well what matches and what don't. What I like and what I don't like. You see these two yellows. I wanted a dark and a, ye a light yellow. And in these bottles I can just see it right off. I don't have to paint sticks. I used to do that, uh, and that's another thing that you can do. You know, the big popsicle sticks, the big um, stir sticks, you can paint those with your colors, and then you can match them up better like that if you don't want to invest in those bottles. Just, you know, just lay your uh, stir sticks that you've painted uh, put the name on the back of them or something, paint the front of them. I used to have some of those around here. If I, if I find them, I'll show them to you. But I don't do that anymore since I have these bottles. But I'll show you what I'm talking about with the sticks. Okay, let me quit talking and throwing tape and paint these and I'll be back. Many of y'all realize that I can't count. I only need two of each. I have eight fish and I'm using four colors so I only need two of each color. I don't know why I was thinking four but okay well we're finished with that color now. So we're going to use the caramel cream. And the way, um, a trick that I use in my mind when I'm doing like two colors in one section like this, I always put the dark to the left. Light right, dark left. That, that's how I do it. And so when you're going around your pattern, you don't get mixed up on which side you should put the dark or which side you, sh you should put the light. Because I'll use dark, light, dark, light. So my dark and light, don't. my two darks won't touch each other. Or the two lights won't touch each other. Alright, let me get that taped up. And when I get these two painted, I'll come back and show you what we're going to use next. Okay, I've got the two colors on. I'll fix that later. 
So I've got, let me make sure. I've got toasted cranberry, caramel cream, Rockwall Vine, and that Jante Green. I'll have to ask my daughters how to pronounce that. They can speak a little French. I can't. I'm Southern English all the way. But let me show you what I'm thinking about. I can't get this purple off of my mind. It's kind of a fallish looking. And that purple just brings out fall to me. So I think that I'm going to ditch the magenta and add yellow. I may be wishing I'd use the magenta instead of the yellow, but I don't know. I kind of like that. So that's what we'll do. And if we don't like it, we can always paint over it. Another coat or two and it'll be changed in a second. Well, let's try this. I'll be back as soon as I get some painted. Okay, we've got the purple prints. That's the dark color. That's the color we have here. And beside of it, I'm putting unimaginable. It's a lighter color. I don't know if you could see that or not, but it's like a lavender. And this is Valspar, and that's usually what I use. Valspar or Bayer. But Valspar Duramax or Season Flex Semi Gloss is usually what I get. The, I like the bear too. Okay, I'll get the second and third coat on that one and the other one up here, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got the purple prints and the unimaginable on. Now, you know, I just keep going back and forth what color to put. But I think I mentioned that I'm going to put, I don't know if I did or not. I may have said another yellow, but I, I'm going to make a decision <laughs> and stick with it. I'm going to put Sunset Glow and Chickadee on it. I think I may have another color of yellow out here earlier, but... I just kept, I wanted to put red, I wanted to put yellow, I wanted to put blue, but I'm going to stick with that fall theme. I think that'll look better. So let me get that taped up and put on, and then I'm going to come back and show you how to make these thins and what we're going to do with that. So I'm just going to tape this up one at a time like I've been doing, and Fix my little boo-boo right there. Actually, I'm going to use one of these little, these, these are the little sanding twigs that I told you about before. And so I'm just going to go in here and get rid of that. so that I don't have to worry about painting over it with that yellow. There's another boo-boo. Okay. Now see? She's good as new. I don't have to worry about painting over that dark color with that yellow now. I found these on Amazon, and they're called sanding twigs, and you get a ton of them in a pack, and you can just cut them down as you use them, so they'll, one would last forever, well, for a long time. <laughs> All right, let me get this uh, Sunset Glow and Chickadee on here, and I'll be right back. 
Let me show you guys something if I can zoom in real close right here. You see, you see how I got my tape right into that corner. And I line my tape up, especially if I'm doing something like this. I will line it up with that, the block that's above it or beside of it, just so that I'll know that I've got that line as perfectly straight as I can. And when I put this piece of tape down, you see I got it right on that corner of this one. And that's what's going to give you those clear triangles and um, your shapes. You won't you won't get off if you get off your your shapes are not going to line up. If I I'll show you one because I usually do that at least once every bar and quilt. But if you just try to be really careful where you lay that tape down, you're going to have some real crisp, clear corners and um, your triangles. So I just wanted to show you that before I took the heat gun and got rid of my lines here. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, look. We got all of our colors on there. Let me go over them one more time in case you want to pick these same colors. And I'm, I want to make sure that I show you and then I'm also going to put the colors down in the description. Alright, so for the green, I have John Tay Green and Rockwall Vine. For yellow, I have Sunset Glow and Chickadee. And for this uh, orange looking cranberry color, I have caramel cream and toasted cranberry and I have sorry <laughs> couldn't reach it I have imaginable and purple prints okay Now we're going to make the little fishes fins with, let's start with this fish right here. All right, here's our fin. If you can see the lines, yep. this is that paint, that tape that I paint, that I cut. So we're just going to follow our lines. I'm just using little scraps of painter's tape that I had from where I cut these big lines. So I don't waste any. To sorry, I <laughs> to dry my paintbrush off. So we have purple prints and imaginable. So I'm going to use purple prints beside of the imaginable for this particular half of its fin. We'll do one fish. 
and let you see how it's looking. Uh, on this dark purple sometimes you have to have more than three coats but I think on the, the dark purple I think I only had to have three we'll see what this looks like let me, let me dry hurt. So I'm putting it on thin. I'd rather put four than and have it thin than to put it on too thick. Okay, now I'm gonna get that dry. I'll paint this one and come back and let you see how how it looks. I just had to pop back on here for a minute and show you this. I think it's going to work out good. The paint don't peel on me. I pull it slow. Look. I think that's a pretty fish. What do y'all think? Now i got to put his speckles. But y'all remember, y'all... Y'all had already drawn those fins. Let me get this pattern and show you. When you were drawing this part in here, can you see that? When you were drawing that part, that's when you drew your fins, and that's what we're coloring in now. Okay, I think I figured it out. No rhyme or reason to these colors, just that I thought it would look good with it, and I was just trying to keep with the fall colors. So I'm going to use coconut milk, which is an off-white, kind of creamy color, and then royal navy for the corners. And that's a dark color I use when I make uh, flags. The, that wave the flag or any other kind of a flag. I always use this Royal Navy as my blue. But I thought that would be pretty. See? What do y'all think? You tell me when I'm finished. <laughs> if you think I made the right decisions or not. Okay, I'm going to tape up the corners and get that painted. And it'll take me a little while to tape up all this around the fish. But I'll show you. And I'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, let's get this tape peeled off and see what we got.
Okay, here we are. I got all the tape pulled off. And it's all painted. I've done my touch-ups. But let me show you what I did. For those eyes, I just dipped the end of this eraser down in my paint and made the eyes. Now, I tried to measure like an inch and a half away from the center and tried to even it up as much as I could so that they would be in a circle. But again, I just used the top of that eraser and dipped it down in my paint and dipped it on there one time and it worked. And so for the little, uh, his little, uh, what do you call them things? Cornea? <laughs> whatever they are, for his little eyeball. I dipped the end of this. This is a giant toothpick, and I use it for, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I use it for um, getting down into the corners and that kind of thing. Now you can use a pencil lead, but this little giant toothpick, I guess it's a little skewer. It goes in a sandwich, but I, I call it a giant toothpick. And I dipped the blunt end down into my blue paint and just dabbed it on there. I dipped and dabbed all the way around. And it worked. Now, let me tell you what else I'm thinking. And y'all let me know in the comments what you think. But I think I'm finished. I was going to make rain, uh, speckle trout, but I just really, the way the colors came out, I really feel like it needs to be rainbow trout. And I'll make a speckle trout another time. And maybe I won't put but like six fish. But I really like this, and I really like it to just be rainbow trout. But y'all tell me what y'all think. You think it would be uh, better if I put specks up in here? Or would it get just too busy? You want it to look like a barn quilt. You don't want it to look like a... I mean, you don't want to look like a painting. I don't know. What, whatever you guys think, tell me what you think. Let me get that pattern back down and show you that pattern one more time so that you can take a snapshot of this and the pattern. So go ahead and take that one if you want it. And here is the pattern. You tell I've been painting on my tablecloth. I think y'all got it. Just take you a snapshot of that. Or a screenshot. And you'll have your pattern. And I think I've gone over all the colors, and I think I showed you the bottles. And I think we're finished with this one. But do let me know if you think I should put those specks on that trout. But I kind of like it the way it is. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.